listening to Destiny the Show. What's good, everybody, and welcome to Destiny the Show, the Destiny news podcast that keeps you, the Guardian, ahead of the curve in the world of Destiny. I am BBK Dragoon, joined as always by my great co-host, Diddy. What's up, man? How was the week? Week was very busy. <laughs> Work is picking up. Whiskey is crazy as always, and uh, your puppy. Oh my gosh! Yeah, that. Yeah, let, yeah. let's clarify. Our, your puppy's our brand, name is Whiskey. Just wanted to throw that because there could have been a brand new listener who's like, "Wow, yeah, Whiskey is it is a crazy whiskey is crazy." Yeah. Oh my gosh! No, it's uh, Whiskey is our thirteen week old standard poodle, and he is very adventurous. He likes to run around. He likes to play. He likes to pee on things, and he likes to bite you. So. Uh, as soon as I get home from work, I change immediately into my puppy clothes, which were about two years ago. They were my nice jeans. And then we got Flynn. It kind of got some holes in them because his puppy teeth were really sharp. And now with whiskey, uh, there's just holes everywhere because he's just crazy. <laughs> That's what they do, man. Has he eaten any furniture yet? No. No, okay. no, no. Good. No. Well, in today's show, we're going to talk about a little raid glitch that's happening out in the Kalos portion of the Leviathan raid. This week at Bungie brought with it information about the new Iron Banner that is returning for Destiny 2. And we also are going to talk a little bit about the friend game, I'm air quoting here, controversy. Just sort of the conversation that it stirred up on the subreddit and throughout the community. So Diddy, without further ado, let's hop into the news. News! So, Diddy, who won the first Faction Rally event? Dead Orbit. Wow. Ooh. Yes, got that Who's surprised? high impact, long range scout rifle that reloads really quick when you crouch. Yep. Good job, Dead Orbit. Well done. Congrats. So, <laughs> 61 million reward packages were counted. Wow. Dead Orbit emerged the most profitable by a margin of more than two million. New Monarchy was a close second, and Diddy, our future war cult, Ugh. was an even closer third. So, so oh well, close. we're only what two weeks away from PC at this point, pretty much. Yeah, we're we're pretty close. October twenty fourth. That's when it. Uh, that's when it's hitting. Speaking of dates, Diddy, depending on when people are listening to the show, Iron Banner is starting October 10th at 2 a.m. Pacific time. So we actually see an activity going live, sort of at the regular reset time, mm -hmm. and it's going yep. to end one week later. Yep, there you go. Uh, October 17th. I mean, the uh, they did confirm we're getting both armor and weapons as rewards for this Iron Banner. They showed off the uh, the Titan, Hunter, and Warlock sets in a, a GIF rotational format. And they, uh, I think the armor looks pretty good. I think it does too. And it's not a reskin. It looks definitely, especially look at the Hunter, very similar to the last iron banner event i'm thinking just of when we were at the iron temple and you had ephrodite there it looks like ephrodite set doesn't it it looks similar yeah it is it is still medieval style so it's uh, those those gladiator you know uh, yeah you know really old european armor set style i think I, I think it looks really good actually yeah i'm hoping for more armor sets like these and hopefully the weapons reflect that design choice too because this is just so different than everything else that we've seen so far <laughs> Hey everybody, it's Dragoon from the future. Most of you know we record on Sundays. Some news came out between today and then about the Prestige Raid and Iron Banner. Unfortunately, the Iron Banner weapons are just reskins. They, like, literally just chopped the scopes off of the existing bodies of some weapons, threw a sticker on it and a different shader, called it good. Huge disappointment when you can consider how awesome the Rise of Iron weapons were. So this is a really big step backwards. I'm not sure why these are such, they, they just seem very low effort. But the second bit of news that happened between today and Sunday was that the Prestige Raid has been delayed one week. Bungie is aware of the raid glitch that we're going to talk about in today's show that causes no ads to spawn in the Callus encounter. So they delayed the launch of the Prestige Raid so they can fix that glitch. That way Worlds First is as fair as possible, which I think is a great and smart idea. So with that said, I'll get back in the DeLorean and head 88 miles per hour back to the past. Enjoy the show. <laughs> Indeed. So the game type is going to be control. It's, of course, 4v4. Uh, they are not enabling power levels, which I'll talk about when we get through the rest of the specifics. So it's, again, kind of like the way Trials is going. No power levels enabled. Bounties and ranks have been replaced with an Iron Banner Engram. So you can kind of see sort of the 
what would you call this? The motif carrying out throughout the rest of Destiny yep. where they're getting rid of a lot of the subsystems and just like, work for an engram, here you go. You know what I mean? Yeah, you'll specifically earn, be earning Iron Banner tokens for every match, uh, even more if you win. So even if yeah. you lose, you still get a token, but if you win, you get more. I'm going to assume three for a win and one for a loss, but uh, we'll see what happens there. Yeah, uh, There's also going to be the daily and season milestones to track your progress to glory, as they say. And then you're going to claim that brand new armor uh, wrought in the forges of the Iron Lords. So Yeah. There you go. So the daily and season milestones, that's the replacement to bounties, obviously. I think they said three daily milestones, and then the season milestone, I think, is getting 10 Iron Banner Engrams, so 10 rank ups, which, nice. you know, we'll have to see how fast or slow that is. It seems a little on the low end, but that sort of sticks in line with I mean, that's probably 10 ranks, SDT2. right? Which would be about 10 to 20 tokens each level. So there you go. Yeah. We'll wait and see what it looks yeah. like in terms <laughs> of the speed. Um, it is Lord Saladin. You know, I asked last week wondering who we thought it was going to be. So it's Salad Bar coming back to handle things. I guess Ephrodite's going to either just be hanging out at the Iron Temple in the cold, wondering where is everybody this month, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's strange that they... I guess Lord Saladin's more of a familiar face than Ephrodite is, but I guess ever since Rise of Iron, we associated Iron Banner with Ephrodite now. Mm -hmm. So what do you think about them disabling the power advantages? I think it's kind of weird because I thought at the very core of Iron Banner... What set it apart, obviously, other than the fact that it was, like, this week-long event, there was different gear, was the fact that light advantages were enabled. It was the test of use your highest light-level gear. If you were 300 coming in there, or excuse me, 400 coming in there as, like, a 370, you were going to feel the burn a little bit more, right? Yeah, it's definitely interesting because you and I thought, you know, with, with Trials, the first week having level advantages disabled was... Yeah, maybe people aren't geared enough yet to really, you know, be competitive enough for that. Or, and, and this time around, it's like, it's been a month. I think people are geared enough to participate in endgame PvP activities. And now with Iron Banner doing the same thing the first week, at least, we don't know if it's going to continue like this, uh, that level, dis level advantages are disabled. It's just, it's very strange to me because, like you said, I think it's actually in, in the lore of Iron Banner as well that, you know, you're actually testing your end game ness and you're just level your power against other guardians in the crucible and if you have higher more powerful gear you're just going to have that innate advantage and i think you know it's definitely a, a head scratcher different we'll have to wait and see let us know what you guys think at destiny the show on twitter prestige rave is live tuesday 10 a.m pacific time diddy what is our new power level and what's changing 300 is the new power level and uh, new challenges across the board. There are some slight mechanical tweaks that they set. Um, we don't know exactly what they are, of course. They're not going to give us any spoilers there. But, yeah, it's just going to be a little bit more challenging. 300 recommended power. So they did note minimal mechanical changes, so the enemies are going to be a little bit tougher. I'm looking forward to this. I think... You know, the Leviathan raid was really, really fun the first week that we ran it. Oh, congratulations as well, and shout out to both sides of the DTS clan, the Xbox One and the PlayStation yes. 4 side. They're just raking in those weekly clan engrams, and I'm just they seeing are. the PS4 raid engram, like, yesterday or whatever. It's like, ah, yeah, well think, done. Yeah, I think the Xbox clan actually beat the PlayStation clan in getting the raid engram this week, so... Uh, let's step it up, PlayStation clan. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, but... Uh, Thank you guys so much for participating in those, for everyone contributing towards those clan engrams and those clan ranks. Thank you guys so much. And PC clan, you guys got to step it up because you're still a zero. <laughs> <laughs> I am really excited about the PC version, man. That's going to be a good time. There's a lot of friends that I've never gotten to play this game with who are interested, and the PC is going to be their first step in. So come TwitchCon, which is October 20th, which is really soon, actually, right before the PC release. There's a panel that Bungie's going to be participating in called The Seasons of Destiny, and it's going to be streamed online, and they're going to talk about what do seasons mean in Destiny 2, what will change from season to season, how many seasons can we expect, and when does season 2 begin? So, Diddy, I'll throw the ball in your court. What do you think from those questions, if you had to speculate? Honestly, if I'm thinking about it from, I'm trying to pretend to be Bungie, I think seasons are going to be times in between, like, DLC. 
I don't want it to be that, of course, but uh, that's what I'm anticipating. Um, I just think seasons are chunks of time that allow different uh, weapon balances, playlists, that kind of thing to be in the Destiny rotation. So right now we're in Season 1, and then when Season 2 rolls around, or when Season 1 concludes, that uh, gives them an opportunity to make some balance changes or introduce more more playlists or even like they're adding rumble playlist or a, a, a mercenary playlist for solo players that kind of thing for matchmaking for the raid uh, and it would be on almost like a quarterly um, rotation there so mm-hmm. uh, when the new dlc launches hopefully in december this year um, we'll see a, a season two come out but uh, hopefully it's sooner than that yeah i think curse of osiris will definitely mark season two or season two will go live like a week before curse of osiris in december now before we get on to friend game uh there is a raid glitch going on in the callous portion of the leviathan fight did you and i saw this video what's sort of your take can you explain it kind of to the audience without giving away too many secrets we don't really want to promote it because it is sort of a network manipulation and historically bungie's not looked very kindly on people who do those types of maneuvers yeah, i should say yeah we uh we don't know if this is officially ban worthy or not because it's you know it's just the raid it's not like uh, i don't know trials tampering or something i don't know but uh it, it is i think it's akin to kind of like the crota cheese where they unplugged the ethernet cable of course i'm not going to tell you exactly how to do the callus cheese i mean you can find it on the internet if you want to really really bad but um, essentially, it is a network manipulation that uh, allows the fire team to load in and have an easier time within the encounter um, and not worry too much about all the mechanics and just defeat Callus uh, really quickly. So um, I think it was bound to happen. I'm surprised we did not find it sooner because, you know, with the Destiny's community's history with finding cheese, um, they are like a, a rat through a maze. They'll find it eventually. And they will eat it all up before it goes away. So, uh, yeah, that's that's my take on it, really. Plus 10 DTS points for the cheese metaphor, Diddy. I'm promoting <laughs> you. you this week. Well done. Thank you. Yeah, it, was, so it was a Gouda today. Gouda. Oh, my it was, it was a, It was a Gouda metaphor. Are we talking about oh. <laughs> oh, man. I, no, I had, a, I had one, and I'm going to reserve it. I'm not even going to use that pun today. <laughs> It just prevents ads from spawning, basically. So that final fight's a lot easier without ads. You can focus. I think on it's. Getting I think it's pronounced down. ants when it's cheese. Sorry, I'm gonna go away now. Bye. How do I kick someone from Discord <laughs> call? How does how does that work here? All right, friend game. So what happened basically is at the end of the TWAB, Deej told a nice little endearing story about a friend that he made a decade ago, and basically said that the real end game rewards are the friends that you make and the communities that you build in the game. I'll read Deej's exact words here in a second. But at a time where the end game, like the more hardcore Destiny 2 community, is pretty much like really disappointed with end game. They feel like the progression loops at the tail end of Destiny 2 are very lacking in contrast with Destiny 1. When they hear from the community manager at the end of the TWAB, the real end game is to make friends, it created a very hostile reaction. If you guys have been paying attention to the Destiny the Game subreddit the last few days, you will see it exploded with things like Bungie's philosophy on Endgame is not okay. And really um, vitriolic stuff, some really great points being made, but also some really toxic things being said as well. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to read Deej's statement at the end of the TWAB. Then I think we shall read Dotto's response to it so you guys get sort of the full picture. And I think Dotto sums it up pretty perfectly uh, as to level head uh, addressing this argument. So... What Deej said at the end of the TWAB. On a personal note, just the other night, after we caught up in the Crucible, I had dinner with a dude I met as a teammate in a Bungie game 11 years ago. I'm a product of the Bungie community. My challenge to every Guardian is to look to the human element in Destiny 2 to fuel your appetite for ultimate replayability. The ultimate loot is the friendships that can grow out of a game like this. There will be more gear to add to your character. The rewards that I'm talking about are the people in the community that thrives in this game. If you let them, they'll make your hobby as a light-dealing hero on a Starside campaign for glory even better. Thanks to those of you who are helping us to drive that scene. End quote. So, Diddy, you could kind of guess why people are really mad when it's like, 
My challenge is to look to the human element of Destiny 2 to fuel your appetite for the ultimate replayability, right? Yeah, that... Uh, it, it seems like, you know, my impression of this statement is that it starts off... I think people just totally miss the first couple words on a personal note, right? Yeah. This is kind of like... Deej, you know, he writes these blog posts about the, the weekly updates as well as Cosmo, but Deej wrote this one in particular, and he says all this official statements from the development teams at Bungie, and then he says at the very end, on a personal note, hey guys, just as an aside, this is what I'm feeling, and he's kind of retrospectively looking into why he plays the game and why he's a part of this community and just what he's got out of it. On the other hand, very poor timing. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, I, I know he didn't mean any um, malicious intent, but it's just talking about the end game like that, and referencing the fact that you know we should be striving towards the human element and becoming friends and making friends with other players who play the game instead of playing the game. It, it's it's just mm -hmm. I think it's just very poor timing. Here, here's Dotto's response, and it's a little bit longer, but I think it it really hits both sides of the argument. So. And I quote, So now that I'm posted on Reddit again, I just want to clarify something on this whole friendship endgame situation. Yesterday, Deej added a little addendum to the weekly update, talking about an experience he had with a friend he met while playing a video game. Uh, how, for him, this is the ultimate goal, making friends in video games. Fairly innocuous, but in a time where endgame content is a hot-button issue. This can also be interpreted as, Hey nerds, instead of bitching about endgame content, go make some friends. And that's pretty much exactly what happened, depending on what kind of player you are. I was asked about this on my stream recently in the form of what do you think of Deej saying that endgame content is supposed to be about making friends. When I presented with that form of his comment, I rolled my eyes. In quite an exaggerated way, turns out people exaggerate when they're streaming who knew. As you might expect someone like me to do. Because that would be a stupid thing of him to say if he said it. Later on in the same stream, we had a better discussion on the topic because there's no way that he would simply come out and say something like that. When presented with the proper context, I didn't have a huge problem with what Deej said, although I had a problem with the timing of it and had a problem with the potential vibe of it. I can see how it can be interpreted by a larger audience, and Lord knows that I interpret it a certain way as well at first. At this point, I don't really care. Is what he said innocent? Yeah. Is what he said capable of being misunderstood? Also, yeah, it all depends on how you wanted that statement to be interpreted and how you end up presenting it to other people. And we've seen both sides of those interpretations recently on Reddit, one being, what a stupid comment, like what I thought when I was first presented with this form of the statement, and you're all being stupid. What Deej said wasn't bad or wrong. I think lesson learned on both sides of the coin. While I do still think endgame content is an ongoing issue in Destiny, I don't think what Deej said was offensive when we view it from the way I imagine he wanted it to be perceived. Although again, the timing was bad in my opinion, and I can totally understand if people are miffed by what he said, as when interpreted in a diff different way, it can feel like a, go make some friends, nerds. So us, community, let's focus a little more on context and Bungie. Let's make our timing on stories not match up with the hot button issues to be not misrepresented. That being said, I really hope Deej is ready to be the butt of the friendship endgame meme for the short term, because I'm going to have some fun with that. I'm sure plenty of others are too. End quote. All right, what do you think? I think uh, Dotto is looked towards in the community as pretty much the voice of reason on a lot of topics, and he, he put it very well. You know, I think he's like, Guys, yeah, it was bad timing, but we need to understand the meaning behind it, and we probably need to be a little bit more understanding of these kinds of things, and uh, because there's a lot of, uh, what a lot of people will do is take posts on like Reddit or Twitter or YouTube, and they'll take it as gospel from any game's community, right? And that's, honestly, that's just not the case. We just got to you know, probably, you know, read between the lines, understand everything, form our own opinions, and, you know, take it with a grain of salt at some times. And, you know, try and understand what other people mean when the, on, on the words that they're saying uh, instead of just outwardly and openly complaining about every single thing that they read on the Internet. Yeah, 
I think the timing was awful, though, and the phrasing yeah, also. It was, like, it's I, very unfortunate. <laughs> I feel like he's in touch enough with the community to have known what this was going to stir up. Obviously not, but I just feel like the ultimate replayability set of wording there is just a little... It's too. It hits too close to the actual hot button issue for me to really be like, how did you not know this wouldn't sort of stir up the beehive, <laughs> in my opinion? I, You and yeah. I have talked about it the last few weeks. We loved the beginning of Destiny 2. We loved the story. We think a lot of the new environments are amazing. The middle portion of the game was great. But both you and I are really disappointed by Endgame. And what we mean by that is progression loops. I mean, if you look at Destiny 2, there's no strike-specific loot. You have no ranked playlist, no raid-specific perks on raid gear, no grimoire score, no real collectibles. You noted, you know, the collectible things that would usually go into kiosks. Now, the mm -hmm. vault does handle some of that kiosk work now, which is pretty cool, but, like, right. no strike scoring, no heroic strikes, no private matches, and no awesome rolls on weapons to grind for. It's just... I don't know what there is left to do. The progression loop at the end of the game feels very, very shallow to me. And you and I are not people who play five or six hours a day. I got a YouTube comment this week that was like, man, the game's not built for people like you who play seven hours a day. And I'm just like, <laughs> hello, I have a normal eight to five. I play this game maybe two to three hours a week right now. I played it heavier when it first came out, but... You also have a ton of stuff going in your real life, and you and I are at the tail end of like, well, there's nothing left to do until Curse of Osiris. Yeah, absolutely. I, I definitely agree with you there. Uh, this time around with Destiny 2, I feel there's definitely more going on in my, in my real life than, than in the game because I, I just recently got a new job. There's lots, of, lots to learn there. I just got a new puppy that I need to train, and I have to train our current puppy to handle the new puppy and you know I just got engaged right so I have a lot of real life things going on that I just can't dedicate the time to play the video game and you know I'm fine with that I play the game like you said two to four hours two to three to four hours a week and yeah I still enjoy logging in and playing it for that amount of time but if I had to play more than that I probably wouldn't enjoy it as much because I'm starting to see hey there's not going to be much more for me to do than these couple hours a week outside of, you know, hitting my head against the brick wall, trying to find something to do. And I just, you know, where I am in my life, I just I can't dedicate the time to do that. Yeah. So I want to close today's show with a tweet from Christopher Barrett. If you guys don't know, he is a lead developer over at Bungie. Did some great work during Destiny 1. And he asked the community, what would you most like to see in the first expansion, hashtag Destiny 2? Now, just judging by the terminology of Destiny 1, the Taken King was considered an expansion. So I imagine Christopher Barrett is collecting ideas for an expansion that will release, <laughs> excuse me, in about a year. And most of the figureheads from the community dropped some pretty good replies. Dotto says, I would like to see a slightly greater focus on the portion of the game after the story is over and some buffs to exotics. MTash says, custom games, spectator mode, ranked play, end game grind with meaningful gear. Gathalion says, content for the more hardcore audience, investment loops that require more time and effort, more loot, random rules return for some gear, private matches, and ranked play for the dedicated Crucible players. More console, love the guy throws in here, strike specific loot, public event engrams that drop unique armor and weapons for each planet. Hoodless Hunter Scarf, hardcore endgame grind, basically more endgame loot to grind for, you know, that kind of a thing. And you can look through here, Triple Rec drops in ranked PvP mode with seasons, a reason to grind strikes, duplicate gear having meaning, as teased by, you know, Luke Smith earlier this year, exotic swords, all that stuff, all coming from the big leaders in the community. And I'll leave this tweet linked on our website, destinytheshow.com, so you guys can throw your feedback at it. So... I, I think, Diddy, our voices are being heard. It's just I don't get why some of the things that were in Destiny 1 are just gone at this point, you know? Yeah, definitely. I, I agree with you there. And the reason we're highlighting these people is because, like you said, they are very prominent figures in the Destiny community. And I just think all these are great ideas. Like we said last week on the show, there's a lot of quality of life improvements that were made in Destiny 1 that are just not present in Destiny 2. And a lot of those I wish came back, you know, and yeah. 
once October 24th gets here, it's that time for them to prove what their investment into the live teams mean in Destiny 2. Yes. That's what, because mm-hmm. I imagine we'll look back at Destiny 2 in a year and go, like, lots has improved. Cool. But I, I think the rubber has to meet the road after the PC releases, and we really need to see meaningful events coming <laughs> into play, meaningful things being added. I think the timing of the PC release, October 24th, is perfect because one like you and i were talking about this week the pc community is brand new to destiny and if destiny 2 doesn't deliver it's not going to hit the bar it's not going to meet that uh, expectation and like you just said with the live team it made me think festival of the lost is around halloween so a week after the pc gets the game they're going to have a live event yeah, it's a good so point. So that was that's going to set an expectation that the PC community has never seen before if they've never played Destiny before. Like, oh, they just started an event a week after I got the game. That's really nice. That's going to be really frequent. And if it doesn't yeah. happen, oh, man, that's not going to be good. Well, I think that's going to do it for DTS 170. Good luck in Iron Banner this week. Good luck to those doing the prestige raid mode. We look forward to hearing what you think of both of those activities on our Twitter, at Destiny the Show. Diddy, where can people find your content? They can find us or find me, sorry, over at uh, twitter.com slash diddy, D-T-S, D-I-T-T-Y-D-T-S, and youtube.com slash whooshness, W-O-O-O-S-H-N-E-S-S. And I just want to say one last time, PC clan, get your stuff together because we need those clan engrams over there. <laughs> get it going. You can find all the links from today and more, destinytheshow.com. You can follow me at BBK Dragoon on both YouTube and Twitter. Thanks for listening, everybody. Have an awesome week, and we'll talk with you next time. Mm-hmm.